One of the scariest things that could happen to anyone is undoubtedly a plane crash. Crashes do not discriminate against celebrities, and a handful have died that way. Patrick Swayze had a near brush with death when he was piloting by plane in 2000, and things went awry. The actor was traveling to Las Vegas, Nevada when his plane went down just outside Phoenix, Arizona. Authorities found the 1978 Cessna abandoned on a dirt road. AirSafe reports that the actor, quote, heard a loud sound when he was at 13,000 feet, and his dogs began barking, so he assumed he had lost pressurization. He thought an airport was below him to land, but it turned out to be a housing development. Swayze landed in the development, hitting a few streetlights and a stop sign as the plane rode through an intersection. A few days after the crash, AP News reported that three people were charged with lying after they allegedly helped Swayze remove wine and beer from the aircraft before driving him to a hotel. His publicist denied that Swayze had alcohol on board. The actor shared with CNN that he wasn't even aware of hitting objects during the crash landing. He said, I was so focused on, I'm so focused on putting it on the ground safely that I didn't, I don't even remember hitting anything. Travis Barker was one of the lucky ones in a plane crash that killed four others. Barker had just wrapped up an event in Columbia, South Carolina in 2008 when he boarded a Learjet 60. The plane was traveling at 150 miles per hour when all four tires exploded. The pilot attempted to abort takeoff, but it was too late. The aircraft reportedly crossed a highway, hit an embankment, and was engulfed in flames. Barker survived the crash, but the two pilots, Barker's bodyguard and assistant, died in the crash. In an interview on The Joe Rogan Experience in 2019, Barker said that he shouldn't have survived. He recalled, When I jumped through the emergency exit when the plane blew up, I was in such a hurry to exit the plane, I jumped right into the jet, which is full of fuel. My whole body lit up. I had jet fuel in my whole body. I burped jet fuel for almost three months after. He had burns on 65% of his body and underwent 27 surgeries after the accident. Barker has not ridden on a plane since. He said, I haven't flown since my accident. I'll take the Queen Mary 2 to Europe, but I would rather be in a raft than plummeting into the ocean. But he isn't ruling it out forever, saying, I tell my children, when you're ready to fly, I'm ready to fly. Adam Goldstein also happened to be on board the fatal plane crash with Travis Barker that ultimately killed four others. Later, it was determined to be the result of a combination of faulty tires and pilot error. Like Barker, Goldstein suffered severe burns. In an interview with Today, the popular DJ recalled the fiery crash, saying he was asleep when it happened and woke up to Barker screaming. He shared, in the ambulance, I was in so much pain. It sounds weird, but they turn the heat on full blast so your body doesn't go into hypothermia. On burns, that's excruciating. A year later in 2009, Goldstein relapsed and died from a drug overdose. His lawyer, Matthew McNicholas, told People that the guilt from the crash might have played a role in the fatal overdose. He said, There's no doubt in my mind that the injuries Adams suffered in the plane crash caused last Friday's events. Without the plane crash, we'd still be enjoying his musical talents. He lived with the trauma every day. Harrison Ford is another celebrity who was at the helm of his aircraft when it went down. In 2015, the actor was riding in a World War II training plane when it crashed onto a golf course, moments after taking off from the Santa Monica airport. The Los Angeles Police Department shared that the crash occurred at Penmar Golf Course at medium to high impact. Paramedics took Ford to Cedars Sinai Hospital for his injuries. Afterwards, Harrison's son, Ben Ford, told The New York Times about his father. He is every bit the man you would think he is. He is an incredibly strong man. The cause of the crash was mechanical, but the 2015 crash isn't the only one that Harrison has been in. The actor nearly flew into a 747 in 2017. Then in 2000, a gust of wind took Harrison's plane off the runway in Lincoln, Nebraska, and in 1999, Ford was training on a helicopter when it made an emergency landing in a dry riverbed in Santa Clarita, California, before tipping over. Luckily, he's lived to tell the tale. The late politician John McCain was involved in three separate plane crashes over the course of his life. All three instances came when he was a member of the Navy. In 1960, he crashed his AD-6 Sky Raider in Corpus Christi Bay, Texas. The late senator hit the water, barely managing to escape and come back up to the surface. In 1965, his T-2 trainer jet lost power. Luckily, he ejected at 1,000 feet while the plane crashed into trees. McCain's most devastating crash came in 1967. He was flying over Hanoi when the right wing of his plane blew off after being hit by a bomb, causing him to crash. North Vietnam held McCain as a prisoner of war for five and a half years. McCain recalled, 
I pulled the ejection handle and was knocked unconscious by the force of the ejection. The airspeed was about 500 knots. I didn't realize it at the moment, but I had broken my right leg around the knee, my right arm in three places, and my left arm. Investigators say that Ed Robertson, who gained fame as a member of the Bare Naked Ladies, is lucky to be alive after a scary plane crash. The singer, his wife, and two of their friends crashed in a private plane in Bancroft, Canada. The Cessna 206 float plane was attempting to take off from a lake when it lost speed and crashed into a wooded area. The plane landed on its nose and the passengers escaped through a window. Robertson was piloting the aircraft when it went down. A deputy fire chief says that the group was all very fortunate to get out with no injuries. He said, They're all really lucky to get out of there. I think there was somebody on their side. Howard Hughes has survived more than one plane crash, but the film producer's most famous crash came in 1946. The billionaire took a prototype of an XF-11 out for a spin. The propeller failed, causing the plane to crash down in Beverly Hills. On his way down, Hughes tried to land on a golf course, but he came up about 300 feet short. Hughes wreaked havoc on the way down, crashing into the upstairs bedroom of Jerry and Elizabeth DeCamp and narrowly missing them. The plane also went through some trees before crashing into the home of Charles A. Meyer. The debris from the aircraft hit several other homes in the surrounding area. When it crashed, the plane burst into flames, but luckily for Hughes, Marine Sergeant William Lloyd Durkin and Captain James Gustin were nearby and able to pull him from the plane. At the hospital, doctors only gave Hughes a 50-50 chance of surviving his injuries, and he did. In 2000, Sandra Bullock was on board a plane that was traveling to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. When the plane landed at the airport, it skidded off the runway in what appeared to be a pilot error. The pilot reportedly mistook a set of lights as he was distracted by the hazardous conditions. Luckily, everyone survived the crash, but the plane had a decent amount of damage. In 2001, the actor told Entertainment Weekly that she had another plane incident while boarding a private plane with Harry Connick Jr. to promote their movie Hope Floats. She recalled, I ran to get my bag, turned around, and all I remember is this flash of light, and then my glasses went flying. I had no idea what had happened, and Harry just said, nobody say anything, she just ran into the wing. There was blood everywhere. I had cut the skin above my eye open. Barack Obama is another politician to be involved in a plane crash, but luckily the crash was minor. AirSafe reports that the crash occurred while Obama was out on the campaign trail in 2008. Obama was on a Gulfstream 2 at Chicago's Midway Airport with a few members of his campaign staff and a few Secret Service agents. They had just returned home from a trip to Nevada, where Obama was campaigning for an election that he would ultimately win. The plane had landed safely on the ground when the left wingtip of the aircraft that Obama was in hit against the right wingtip of a Cessna 208 that was parked at the airport. Luckily, the incident was so minor that nobody even noticed it until after it occurred. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.